of this video, we're going to be discussing essential shortcuts in Photoshop that every beginner graphic designer should know. Welcome back to the channel. My name is CJam, and in this video, we're going to be discussing some Photoshop shortcuts that I want to share with you as new graphic designers. You guys should know these shortcuts to speed up your workflow, right? So here we are already inside of Photoshop and we have some layers over here in our layers tab. And the first thing I want to do is let's just say I want to bunch up all of these layers into a group, right? What I want to do is select everything over here that I want inside my group and hit Control G on Windows or Command G on Mac. And that will give me a group as you can see here. And if you double click on that group, you can rename it, let's say, photo and text right and there you are and let's say i'm not happy with that shortcut and i want to undo that and go back to where i started all i have to do is hit ctrl z and as you can see it undid the group and ctrl z is a pretty general shortcut that works the same across multiple apps not just photoshop but apps like Microsoft Word or any kind of editor that you may use on a computer. Control Z is pretty much standard. So is Control C, Control V, etc, etc. But let's say I want to copy something. Let's say I want to copy this model that we have here, right? Let's go ahead and hit Control C. Let's say I want to paste her in the exact same spot where I copied her from. All I have to do is hit Control Shift and V, Command Shift V if you're on Mac and you didn't even notice that something happened because I now have a second layer over here called duplicate number one. And if I were to turn it off, you won't see the difference because this layer is in the exact same position. Let me turn these off for you as that one. So we have this one and this one and you couldn't even tell the difference right now in photoshop as you know you have a bunch of tools over here on the left hand side right it may be elsewhere for you because you can move it around and place it wherever you want but all of these tools here have shortcuts and the tool that you will use the most is the move tool now to activate the move tool all you have to do is hit v on your keyboard and then you can move any element inside of photoshop to wherever you want by using the move tool right undo that by hitting ctrl z command z on mac let's say you want to type something you want to add some more text to this image another basic shortcut is t for your type tool all you have to do is just click anywhere within your template and then you can start typing right that's all it takes to start typing and you can move your text to anywhere you want on your template by using that same move tool that we just looked at and if you hover over all the tools here you'll notice that they each have shortcut your brush tool has shortcut b so we need not exhaust all of these because they're already listed here as shortcuts here in photoshop i want to also look at one more shortcut here for another tool which is the shape tool which is my ultimate favorite tool here in photoshop and that shortcut is the letter u on your keyboard and then you can just draw out any shape that you have selected and then hit v on your keyboard for your move tool and then just move it around to wherever you see fit like so right as you can see the move tool is super important as i mentioned earlier right if you just so happen to be working with images here in photoshop and you want to edit an image all you have to do is open your camera filter here by going Control shift a command shift a on mac and that will give you your editing controls here in adobe's built-in camera raw filter here inside of photoshop right and with that you can adjust the lighting on an image you can go down to your color mixer and change like background color etc whatever you want to adjust you can do it all here in your camera raw filter by using that shortcut Control shift a command shift a and i also recommend using the camera raw filter on a smart object right that will lead us into our next shortcut so let's go ahead and click ok and to do that on smart objects using the camera filter, what I would do, what I did for this particular image here is I duplicated the background by hitting Ctrl and J, which is the shortcut for duplicating a layer. So you can see that our shortcuts are really playing into each other. These are pretty cool for all my beginner graphic designer friends out there. Oh, and when you're using your camera filter, always use it on a smart object. Let's say I want to know what size my document is here, right? All I have to do is hit Ctrl alt and i command option i if you're on mac 
and it will show you the size of your document. For example, this image that we're working with is 6720 pixels by 4480 pixels with a resolution of 300 dpi, right? And if you want to adjust the size of the image, you can do that as well with that shortcut. But let's say you want to resize this entire canvas, right? All you have to do is hit Control Alt and C, Command Option C if you're on Mac. No, you can change the canvas size as you so desire, right? Without losing any data from the text or images that you have here. So let's say I want to make this 1080 pixels wide by 1920 pixels high, right? And all I have to do now is click OK, right? And Photoshop will tell me that some clipping will occur and all I have to do is click proceed. And you see Photoshop crop the image for me according to the canvas measurements that I input, right? Let me undo all of that by hitting Control Z. Now the difference between changing the image size and changing the canvas size is that changing the image size, let's say for example, I wanted to change this image and conform it down to fit within the size of an Instagram story like I just did. Changing the image size, using the image size option, Photoshop will squish that image down into whatever size I input, which will mess with the proportions and just how my image looks. Versus adjusting the canvas size, everything in my image will remain the same, the model, the text, everything. Photoshop will just adjust the canvas size for me and all my elements will retain their same quality. Nothing will be changed, right? I won't lose any quality. Now, let's say, for example, our text here, the small text here was just off to the side for whatever random reason, right? And I wanted to bring it into the center, aligned perfectly horizontally and vertically. All I have to do is hit Control A, Command A if you're on Mac. That will select my entire project area for me. If you look around the edge of my document, you can see you have some running lines there, some dashed moving lines. And next, I can pair this selection of the entire project area with my Move tool by hitting V on my keyboard. Then I'll get some tool options up top here. All I have to do is align the horizontal and vertical edges, and that will bring the text in the middle for me. You can see it right here. This allows me to align it even to the edges, but align it to my entire project area, right? Now, if you're finished aligning whatever element you're using with this technique and you want to deselect the entire project area, all you have to do is hit Control D, Command D if you're on Mac, right? And you'll see that all my running lines are now gone. And if I want to save all that we've been doing here thus far, all I have to do is hit Control S to save my project. Command S if you're on Mac. Next, if you're here working and you want to zoom in on your project to so just see an element that's really small on your canvas, all you have to do is hit Control on your keyboard, Command if you're on Mac, and use the plus and minus icons on your keyboard as well, right? Same applies using your mouse wheel. All you have to do is hold Alt on your keyboard, Option if you're on Mac, and roll your mouse wheel up or down and that will zoom in or zoom out, right? And you can use the zoom tool as well over here in your tools by hitting the Z key, Z key on your keyboard and you can just magnify any particular area on your image that you'd like to zoom in on, right? And over here in our layer stack, if for whatever reason you want a new layer to let's say, for example, use your brush tool or do anything else on, all you have to do is hit Control Shift and N, Command Shift N if you're on Mac, and then you'll get this little dialog box here, and you can name this layer Brand New Layer, right? And you can just go ahead and click OK, and you'll see that we got the layer here in our layers, right? And if you're finished with this particular document and you want to start something brand new from scratch to try a new idea or a new technique, all you have to do is hit Control and N, Command N if you're on Mac, and you can create a brand new document here in Photoshop. All you have to do is enter the values that you like. Let's say we want to make an Instagram story, 1920 by 1080 pixels, resolution 300. And here we are with our brand new document. Let's go back to our previous project. And if this text, the big text that we had before, it says awesome, right? If for whatever reason that's too bright for us and we want to tone it down by adjusting the opacity is the term here in Photoshop. All you have to do is use the number pads on your keyboard or the numbers on your keyboard between 0 to 9 and you can adjust the brightness or the opacity. So let's say for example I hit 5, that will bring it down to 50% opacity. You can see it's over here under opacity. If you hit 1, it will bring it down to 10%, almost invisible. 
if you hit zero it will bring it back up to 100 percent etc etc so these are my tips for beginner graphic designers with shortcuts that they can use to speed up their workflow let me know in the comments did you think i left out any shortcuts are there any shortcuts that you'd like to see in a potential next video let me know in the comments below thank you thank you so much for watching this video and if you'd like to check out more Adobe Photoshop tutorials, click right at the screen to watch this video right now.